Have you ever wondered how your car knows the exact amount of fuel that it needs? Modern vehicles are equipped with a computer known as the Engine Control Unit or ECU. The software that runs it has several maps that instruct the engine what to do under a wide variety of conditions. Maps are tables with parameters such as engine speed and load in the X and Y axis. One of these tables is the so-called fuel map and that's our topic for today. Air fuel ratio is significant because it affects cold start, idle stability, drivability, fuel economy, horsepower, emissions, and durability. Back to the map. Engine speed measures how fast the crankshaft spin and is denoted in revolutions per minute. Engine load is the percentage of the measured intake air compared to the theoretical maximum. To understand how the fuel maps are selected, it will be easier if we split the table into multiple sections. Let's call them idle, cruise, and wide open throttle, or what? Idle is the rotational speed at which the engine runs when it's disengaged from the drivetrain, so it consists of the lower RPM region. Cruise range is the area where we mostly operate in normal day-to-day -day driving. This is typically in the low to mid portion of the map. Lastly, what is achieved by flooring the accelerator pedal, such as when you try to pass another vehicle or climb a hill? As the name implies, during this condition, throttle is fully open, providing the least resistance to the incoming air, and therefore has the highest load. As you can see in this sample map, most of the idle and cruise points are at 14.7, while the watt area is at 13.0 and below. Now let's understand why. The stoichiometric ratio for air and gasoline is about 14.7 to 1. Theoretically, that mixture should turn all of the fuel and oxygen into CO2 and H2O during the combustion process. This fraction is optimal for most city driving since it's the best compromise for emission and produces good fuel economy. However, depending on the priority, it is not always ideal to run stoichiometric and therefore AF ratio is dynamic and changes in response to operating conditions. If the ratio is larger than 14.7, the mixture burns lean. On the contrary, when the ratio is lower, combustion burns rich. Let's use these two charts to support our explanation. For instance, the best ratio for performance, known as lean best torque or LBT, is on the richer side, typically between 12.5 and 13. This occurs because rich combustion burns faster and pressure is built quicker. Therefore, AF ratios in this range are very popular at the watt area. Another benefit is that the excess fuel cools down the combustion chamber through evaporation and heat absorption. That's why rich mixtures are used in the mid to high portions of the map. When car manufacturers tune enrichment, they also have to consider fuel economy and emission standards. Therefore, mixtures leaner than LBT are preferred when possible, which means there's often room for improvement when it comes to power. Some high-speed, high-load areas can't avoid significantly rich ratios in order to keep engine temperatures at a safe level. The obvious disadvantage is high fuel consumption and increased CO and HC emissions. On the other hand, lean combustion burns hotter and is more efficient, which improves fuel economy. Due to the excess of air, the amount of unburnt fuel is reduced and the energy extraction is maximized. Higher temperature also means larger cylinder pressure, which allows the piston to do more work with less fuel. The reason why it doesn't produce the best performance is that lean ratios burn slower so the higher pressure occurs later. Nevertheless, the main downsides are that it generates high levels of NOx emissions which are bad for both humans and the environment alike. Also, high combustion temperature can compromise the engine durability. That's why you will rarely see leaner mixtures than 14.7 in fuel maps. The way the engine ensures that it's achieving the target air fuel ratio is through sensor feedback. As the engine pulls in air, it's measured by an airflow meter. Next, the ECU calculates the injector pulse to achieve the optimal enrichment. While the combustion gases flow through the exhaust pipe, an AF sensor measures the oxygen content and sends the information back to the ECU. The ECU then corrects the injector opening duration in a continuous repeating process. One last thing to mention is that if the engine's operating condition falls between two values in the fuel map, for example, 1600 RPM at 95% load, 
the target AF will be interpolated from the neighboring points. This eliminates the need to have an infinite number of versions in the table. Well, that's it for this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want similar content in the future. Till next time.